All right, folks, yes, we are in the man cave on this video. I know you see the wires back there. You know, people always got to look at the background. But we in the house. We ain't in the car. We ain't in the, we ain't in the Jesus boo. <laughs> we in the crib. We in the basement. We in the man cave, so to speak. And I'm editing another video that I just put up. And the Holy Spirit came upon my heart to show you proof of what's going on today, as I said in the videos that I just put up on both channels, about keeping your garment clean, about getting ready for the marriage. Exodus 19. Okay. In Exodus 19, we hear on verse 7 and 8 and 9. And we're talking about that garment, ladies and gentlemen. We in the book. All right. And God told Moses to tell them, get, get yourself ready because there's going to be a meeting. This was the marriage. Out of this marriage came the 12 tribes of Jacob. So let's go into this. Verse 9, and the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, come, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. The cloud is purposed so that the glory of God will not kill us in these weak, feeble, unclean, sinful bodies. Okay? We are seeing him in a cloud until we get completely transformed on our way up. Okay? Cloud is very important. When you see cloud, Jesus and God, that means he's protecting us from his complete, clean holiness. But when the scriptures say he come back and he not on the cloud in Revelation 19 and 11, coincides with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, which talks about he shall destroy them with the brightness of his coming and the word as a sword coming out of his mouth which is then picked up in Revelation 19 and 11. It says the same exact thing, to judge and rule. So anytime he appears to the people in a cloud, he's not trying to kill you. That's for our protection. Moses said, let me see your glory, God. He said, not so, lest it should kill you. And I would hide you in the cleft of the rock, and you can watch my back parts as they pass. Okay, you hear myself talking in the background because I'm doing some editing. Now, this is important, folks. The garment is important and keeping it clean. Okay, let's go back to nine again. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto you, which is thee, in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak to you and believe you forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. Verse 10. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them to today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. We're going to keep reading. Understand what God told Moses to do to tell the people. Get right, because I'm not coming to meet you when you're foul and you're dirty. Moses was the Jesus type in betwinks. Abraham was the Jesus type in betwinks. The people and Yah. Jesus is the same. Telling us that in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. Get yourself together. Clean your garment. Keep it clean. Do not defile yourself. And I will not blot out your name. And I will confess your name before the Father and before his angels. This garment is very important. This garment. It's, it's, it's very important that you, because of your free will, you don't want to render your members to sin. It's important in that kind of way. It housed the life and the spirit man that God put in us. Yes, it's a, it's a sin nature, a sin body. But when you walk in with Christ, you're not supposed to, to yield yourself to, 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 to participate in sin. That's what the overcomer is. You did not yield yourself into temptation with this garment. Okay. Let's go back to 10 again. And the Lord said unto the Moses, go unto the people and sanctify them for two days. And let them wash their clothes. Consecrate. You're getting ready for something to happen. 
God is revealing all of this nasty garbage on earth because he wants us to wash ourselves of this world. Wash between your leg. Cock that leg up and get in there with a bar of soap and some body wash and get down up in there and wash. You stink. Tell them to wash themselves before they come meet me. Sin is all over us. Wash yourself. But we wash ourselves with the blood of the Lamb. When you came to him and accepted him as your Lord and Savior. But then you got to continue to pick up that cross every day through repentance because you live in sin every day. I don't live in sin. I don't even sin. You're talking stupid now. Yes, you do. We all live in sin. What is that sin? The flesh. The flesh is sin. We live in sin daily. Let me say that one more again. Let me hit it for you one more time. The flesh is sin. It is an enemy against God. It is enmity, the Bible says. We can't please God in this flesh. But that's the, the, the dividing part of understanding. You live in sin. I live in sin. We all live in sin daily. And you say, you ain't got to repent. You ain't got to keep your garment clean. You ain't got to try your best. When we live in a sin-filled flesh body every single day. And, that, and through that, this body comes temptation if you are not walking in the light of Christ. We all going to make some mistakes, stumble, yeah. But that's not an excuse to say, well, I don't have to openly repent. But you can openly cuss people out, though. You can openly have conversation and rumor conversation with folks that you know you shouldn't be. See, so the Bible say it's not just your acts. It's your tongue not to engage in unclean conversation. Come on now. Let's 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 eat the meat court correctly. Make sure it's well done. Some of these pastors want to give you uh, uh, lukewarm meat. They want to give you uh, uh, half cooked meat and it still got blood running out of it. There's no edification in that because it ain't fully cooked. They want medium well, well done. See, we want well done. They barely want some burn on the skin, but the rest of the meat's still moving. That's what's up with folks today. Even now, see, back then in, in Exodus 19, okay, this is very important, folks. The garment. People believe that repentance is not needed. They can live in a sloppy, nasty garment. And think they're getting in. God said himself, tell the people to wash their clothes. Let's keep going. Verse 11. And be ready. What do I, do I, what do I always say? If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Because if you go back up to verse 10, it says to wash their clothes. So if in the natural, I say this all the time, we can do it in the natural while we can't do it in the spirit. Now, some of y'all may be nasty and don't wash your clothes but once a month. You keep wearing the same socks and, and underoos for a whole week. It's, it's, we, if, if we wash our clothes in the natural, why do we have a problem washing our spiritual garment? You can go to the gym and work out, pump iron, get all huge and big, but you ain't pumping no spiritual iron. And your spirit, man, just is weak and feeble. And be ready against the third day, even before Christ was born. The third day was very important to God, even in the natural. The third day, you can be sick, but on the third day of your cold or flu, you start getting better. You could be fasting and praying, but on the third day, going into the fourth day, the fast gets easier. Numbers are very important. It's the key to the code of life. People don't understand it. They don't, they don't get it. But once you understand the number key code that God gave us in this book, even got a book called Numbers. Once we understand the numbers, folks, and how God operate, manifestation ought to be happening up here. Like, oh, okay, now I get it. Okay. Be ready against the third day, and the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. This was a marriage. Holiness is coming down in the sight of all people. But in order for you to be there, 
You have to wash your clothes and get them clean. Your garment must be clean. What happened to the one that got caught at the wedding? The wedding hadn't even started yet. They were just going over the guest list. Hey, you don't have on the right garment. You got to go into outer darkness where weeping and gnashing of teeth shall be. It's all about clean, folks. Nobody's going before the throne, living an unclean lifestyle, no repentance, and you still think you're going to get there. He told Moses to tell them, wash their clothes. Make sure they get right. Get clean. Okay? I'm going to come down in the sight of all of Israel. Okay? Now, that's the meat of the conversation I wanted to get to. About God being persistent about keeping that garment clean. Okay? Because that garment is a, it, it, it's a sign of showing responsibility of something that he gave you. That you didn't give yourself. You didn't ask to be born. But you are born. And all you got to do is keep his words of his commandments. And he'll keep you from temptation. All you got to do is pick up your cross daily. When he said tell them to wash their clothes. Why? Because I'm coming down to meet them. First Thessalonians 4, <coughs> 4 and 16, 17. Excuse me. He's coming down with the sun to meet us in the air. And at that point, there will be garments given, fresh and white and clean, raiment. Okay. If he told them then to, to wash themselves and get them clean, because holiness is about to come down. But in this time, holiness is going to come down in the midst of the heavens and snatch the plenteous up. God is revealing all of these wickedness and, and, and these works of iniquity and the mysteries of the works of iniquity that's already there, that's already doing this thing, and it's being revealed, okay, that this is what's going on in the world. He's telling my children, telling what he said, my, this is what's going on. I'm about to come down, and you better be back here at the base of this mountain. And you had to, it was only a certain amount of, uh, uh, certain close to take a go. Or his glory would kill him. And he's and, and, and that's what's going on today, folks. Wash, keep yourself clean. But again, folks like to smell themselves nasty. And musty. People, it's, it's, some people get off on that. Well, God going to clean me up, so I ain't got to wash nothing. I ain't got to bathe. You bathe in the natural. You wash your clothes in the natural. Why we can't do that? In the spirit, folks. That's all. That's all I'm asking. Why is it so hard? Why we got to come up with all these doctrines? That we're not doing what, what God and Jesus told us to do. Keeping your garment clean. How, a lot of folks think they're going to stand before him in a dirty, filthy garment. With no uh, uh, relationship. The reason why Jesus said, depart me before I never knew you. In order to know somebody, that means you got to spend time with them. So if you run out here, you talking about you always and ain't never got to, then you ain't spending no time with him. You haven't developed a relationship with him. Because if you had a real relationship, Holy Ghost should convict us of the foolishness that we are participating in and you should want to do right. So if that's the case, if you got a problem with X, Y, Z, as I've been telling folks for years, throw away the problem. The tool that allows you to do that thing. Throw it away if it's causing you a problem. You find yourself spending more time in that than you do the word. Mitch, uh, 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 a lot of us, which that's going to be all of our testimony. Let's just be real. We spend so much time in the world, living for the world, going after the world, chasing after worldly things, even though we say well, it ain't like that. But yes, it is like that. We are, you know, you going to work. You got to pay for the house. Now, the other argument is, well, you know, God gave it to us. He blessed us with it. So when we wake up in the morning, it should be thank you for waking me this day to see a new day that I've never seen full of brand new grace and mercy. Thank you for the house that you've given me and the roof and the walls and the food and refrigerator. Thank you for giving me the ability to be able to wash clothes, even have clean clothes. Because, Father, we know that there are people out there who are homeless and do not have a place to go, who wish they had a house or an apartment. 
who wish they had a vehicle, even though we might complain about paying the car note and paying insurance. We get to get around. God has given us. But do we re remember that? Do we authenticate that on a daily basis in prayer? Or do we just go to prayer and we just beg for more stuff from God? God, well, Lord, all I, you know, all I need is this and all I, no, you need the air he gave you to breathe, water to drink, to live, food to eat. Everything else is just cherries on top of the whipped cream. Because there are people out here, I've, I've been in the street, been out there ministering to folk. There are people who out here, let me tell y'all something. I've ran into people out there in street ministry who said, I would rather be in the street than to pay bills and be responsible. This is what people say. Everybody in the street out there ain't a dope fiend either. I've met women and children who have left their abusive husband and took their children out in the street. And then I find myself conflicted. Is that child endangerment to stay? Or is it child endangerment to even take them and be out in the street in the elements? But you pray for them anyway. That's God's decision. There's a lot of situations, reason why people are out there. And and you're one repentance away from in, inheriting an eternal house for those who don't do it. It don't take much for us to be in the street and it don't take much for us to be in a lake of fire. You know, to see how that works. It don't take much. Either way, it don't take a lack of action or more action of something. The last time you opened the door for a stranger. Hey, how you doing, Miss Betty? Come on in. Funny how we get to running and moving fast for our own fleshly need and guile. Friday is one of the worst days to be in the street because there are so many attitudes in the street on Friday. I, I Uber and I live. I can tell you. Impatientness. I got to get there. I, 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 me, me, me. A lot of mistakes happen on Friday because people are getting off work. So, a lot of mistakes happen on Monday because people flying to get to work. Break our neck to show a to show ourselves loyal to something that's not getting us into heaven. But the thing that that we ought to be showing ourselves loyal to, we're not doing that. We're not spending. I'm not saying everybody, but. The fact that, that 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 I can see more than one or two comments that people say I have never read that scripture before, and here you are a grown adult, and my fire for having both of these channels and the platforms is so that I'm pointing scriptures out that don't nobody read or pastors don't like to teach on because it would scatter the flock the way that they would hate because that means money leaving the church. But when I hear these testimonies, I've never read that. That's one of the reasons why I'm on here doing what I'm doing. Because there are scriptures that and 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 that should not be, man. It's it's very disheartening to hear anybody say that. I've never read that. But yet we've I mean, and another part about that is, you know, folk, you know, will open up these books. So Yes, it's a lot of pages in this book. It's a lot of words. It's a lot of chapters. Okay. But with all the time that we have on earth, folks, that we've had up to this moment, the one thing that's going to be troubling, question to answer with fear and trembling. What did you do? Did you read my book? Did you read it? And God going to say, yeah, I know you know every episode of Sanford and Son. I know you know every episode of Friends and Night Court and all the other shows, Housewives. You've seen them episodes multiple times. You own rerun DVR. Did you rerun my scripts? Did you go back in here? And how many times have you read my book? So obviously, there's going to be people based on 
These statements in the comment section, I never read that. I'm 51 years old, right? If I would say, even somebody 41 or 31, and you claim you love Christ and you've been in the church, and you say you never read it. So, I know we get busy with life down here on earth and we always push the Bible. We always do this to the Bible and push it over here to the corner because we got a lot of other things going on. But think about it, folks. Think about it. We're going to stand before Yah one day. And he's going to ask the question, did you read my book? Knowing, see, this is very important. This is the reason why I say we got to watch, the Bible say, watch what you say. If you type that, if you say that to somebody, I've never read that before. But statement before that says you bragged on how much you read your book. So, what, now I know that might be a tough statement. Well, Brother Anthony, you know, everybody. But see, here we are with the excuses, though. There won't be no time to make excuses. This is the reason why I am pointing this out now. There won't be a chance for excuses when we stand before Abba. And he knows how much time we spend in other things. But the thing that could bring you eternal peace and joy and, and, and crowns in heaven and riches in heaven the thing that means the most, I've never read that verse. That's going to be played back. All the critical statements we've ever made in life, from the time you could stand up on both of your ten toes and walk and start to talk, everything we've ever said is going to be looked at and judged, the Bible says. Now, the excuse is, the reason why I've never read that before, how many books? 66. There's a lot of words. There's a lot of uh, stories. There are a lot of families. There are a lot of tribes. There are a lot of prophets. There's a lot of things in there. So when, when, when I hear the words, especially when it comes to salvation, and, and what Jesus said in, in this red print, and I hear the words of, never read it what verse and chapter is that there are some verses in the book that you may, you may not remember especially Old Testament that are stories especially the one about David being chased around by Saul and Saul fell asleep in the cave David went in there and cut a piece of his garment off and then when 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 he woke up, when Saul woke up, he, David took it over there to him. I could have had your head if I wanted to, but God said not to do it. The whole story even behind him chasing him because he was jealous of David. Because David was a righteous dude that when he did stuff, people looked at it. Saul wasn't getting that kind of, he wasn't getting that kind of eyeball. Those kind of stories, of course, not everybody going to remember. But when it comes to stuff when G when thus says the Lord or when Jesus is speaking about blotting names out and confessing your name and keeping his laws and statutes and commandments and all of that stuff I would really focus on with folks is you better study everything that's in red print. First, if you feel like, well, that's just, I don't know where to begin. Everything Jesus ministered, you need to get in that red print. Because if I read red print on video and people say they've never read that, that's the problem. Here I am making another long video. I, I be trying to stop at 15 minutes, but then butter happens and then I get on a roll. And so, but anyway, the whole meat of the story, and then I didn't got off and, and talking, giving you other stories in the Bible. God is calling us to clean ourselves, folks. He called. He told Moses, tell the children of Israel to get their selves clean. Because heavenly royalty is coming down. So if you don't think you have to repent or live righteous or live holy, God would have never told Moses to tell the children of Israel to go get clean. Cleanliness is next to what? 
godliness. And where did that phrase come from? It came from that particular chapter in Exodus 19. What did it say? Tell them to get themselves clean. Jesus taught through Paul in Corinthians, don't touch the unclean thing and I will receive you. Just hit it in reverse. So if you keep touching unclean lifestyle, he's not going to receive you. That's New Testament. Old Testament. Go get washed up. Get them, get them clean. Call them coming down. And I want, and they're going to see me come down in a cloud. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17. Those who have kept their garments clean, living and walking in holiness, living a righteous, repentant lifestyle, when he comes down on this mountain in the air on a cloud, we're going to get called up. But it's only for the people that's been keeping themselves clean. If in the natural you will not be received if you're walking around F-U-N-K-Y, funky and musty, and you don't put on deodorant, who is going to receive you? I work with a cat that keeps pop bottles and, and cans piled up in his passenger seat all the way up to the dough lot. He ain't got no woman unless she's just as nasty as him. So if in the natural... You won't receive people if they stink, got body odor, and they unclean. How you think God going to take you the same way? If you won't take people that way. Because it's something easy to do. Wash, scrub, hot water, and soap. Tell them to get clean before I come down and meet them. Those who have overcome have kept their garment clean. You will be given a new garment. But if you ain't keeping yourself clean and you don't go in there and scrub some Holy Ghost hot water and soap on your behind and you think it's cool to live dirty and foul because I'm just an old wretched sinner. If that's what you think, you're going to be in for a rude awakening. Peace out.